there is a full blown attack, a full out attack on cryptocurrency. In today's video, I'm going to show you what Elizabeth Warren said about cryptocurrency, that it needs to be shut down. But as we learn more about this space in the monetary system, this is nothing new under the sun. I'm going to pull the wool off your eyes and show you a little bit of a different perspective on what I think is happening. Now, remember, when they resist it, when they resist it, when you're looking this way, there's always another narrative going on this way. My name is Coach JV. It's nice to meet you guys from my family's heart to yours. I love you. The reason why I do my YouTube channel and why I created my Warrior Academy is to help people make the complex simple. We grew up in a vertical financial system. Go to school, get a job. Get a 401k, but the question you have to ask yourself, let me let me give you a, um, a little bit of wise wisdom that I got while I was in banking school. I remember asking one of the professors, just please let this sink in. I asked one of the professors when I was at CBA Executive Banking School, I said, why is it like this? You know, I was reading the book Jekyll Island, <laughs> ironically, while I was in banking school, The Creature of Jekyll Island. I said, why is it this way? He said, that's the way it's always been. And I thought in my head, I'm like, just because that's the way it's always been, that doesn't mean that's the way it should be. And the problem with the system we live in is we just accept what has always been and we trust people with our hard-earned money. But the question you have to ask yourself is, are you questioning it? So the question is, if going to school, getting a job and getting a 401k is the path to wealth, safe and secure, then why do so few people retire with more than a million dollars and a million dollars at 4% interest? This is not calculating for inflation. It'll be $40,000 a year. That is not retirement income. So the question we have to ask ourselves, if the system works and why are most Americans broke? If the system works and why are Americans buried in debt? Well, that's why I created my whole Warrior Academy is to create an ecosystem. So you're not looking over here. You're not looking over there. There's a systematic project process you go through day one all the way through 20. Rewiring the subconscious mind. Day week one, you're already doing a budget. We have five pillars of wealth. We break everything down. We have a horizontal investment strategy, horizontal. We have cryptocurrency, which is a very speculative asset, which I'm going to show you right now. We're getting into real estate. We do insurance to secure our wealth and have that safety and security and pass that down for generational wealth. And I'm now licensed in insurance and I'm building a team within my academy. We also do precious metals. And we also focus on making sure we understand how businesses work. We own multiple business. 32 companies have been created inside of our Warrior Academy. We own eight of them. We are an ecosystem of like-minded individuals that are moving in the same direction. We're not against any invisible enemy, but we are here for humanity. That's it. So in the description down below, I'd love to invite you in seven days for free. See if we're full of shit. Drive for seven days. If you don't like it, cancel within the seven days. No charge to you at all. So let's jump right into a family. Okay, so we're going to jump into this today. Uh, in the description down below, two things. So there's the Warrior Academy, and we have our meet and greet July 15th. Um, we are at capacity, but we're going to keep accepting people uh, because people, you know, people say they're going to come, but you have to RSVP. It's at our exclusive event. It's a free event down below. Okay, so <laughs> this is getting wild. Now, the good news is when it starts to get like this again, when they start to attack crypto, remember Jamie Dimon told you you're a criminal. This is when I was in banking. I was in banking during this time and Jamie Dimon told us you're a criminal if you invest in Bitcoin, okay? Now, you have to listen to what they're saying. Jamie Dimon said, Bitcoin is a fraud, but blockchain is here to stay. That confuses the people. So if my mom is sitting there watching TV or my dad is watching TV or the normal everyday person who's programmed by a television, the normal everyday person, when they hear that, they trust these people in the suits. They trust Elizabeth Warren. They trust Janet Yellen because that's all they know. So when they hear that, their immediate response is when somebody brings up cryptocurrency, oh, that fake money, the, the dollar you're using in your 401k is fake money. <laughs> your dollar that you use every single day that you work so hard to put in your savings account, baby boomers, is fake money. If you have $300,000 sitting in the bank, 550,000 of it's not even secure. And you don't even know if that bank is going to be solvent. They have no money. Your money is fake. So if crypto's fake, your money's really, really, really fake. A lot of the cryptocurrencies have actually real world technologies backing them. So that's what I mean by removing the wall. And now here's a whole nother thing. Now, first of all, before I jump into this, we're going to talk about fentanyl and, you know, opiates. Guys, if you know my story, you know, this may turn you guys off, but 17 years ago, I committed suicide due to an opiate addiction 17 years ago on December 18, 2006. So I have so much uh, passion, compassion, 
for people who struggle with opiate addiction or any type of addiction. And you should never cast judgment because people have food addictions. They have porn addictions. They have uh, sex addictions. Just because it's not seen physically doesn't mean that we don't all have addictions. We all have addictions. We all have demons, right? We're all working on ourselves. So when I talk about this, I'm not discounting that there is a problem with fentanyl. Please know that I'm not discounting that there's a problem with addiction with alcohol and opiates. I understand there's a massive problem. What I'm pissed about is that this lady is using Elizabeth Warren is using a very sensitive subject. OK, that also is this stuff is all tied together, guys. I'm telling you that I'm not going to get into that. This is all tied together. Money, politics, just put it that way. Money and politics are all tied together. She's now using fentanyl. And this very sensitive subject to say that cryptocurrency is the reason why. Let's just go through this. Okay, so let's dive into this. Okay, so she's saying that's the reason why. Okay, oh, my computer just shut down. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay, we're back up. Okay, so crypto fentanyl trades is worth tens of millions of dollars security researchers. Okay, so she decides to use this as her platform. Okay, she decides to say, okay, now think about this. You're sitting at home and she's like, fentanyl, fentanyl, crypto, fentanyl, crypto. So if you go to invest in crypto, you feel guilty as shit, right? Guys, if you're going to deal drugs or you're going to do something outside the system, you're going to use cash. Cash. <laughs> it's not traceable. But they're going to do it on the blockchain. Yes, there's a lot of people using crypto. That is probably the worst thing you can do it. It can be tracked. Follow some of the Bitcoin things with the pipeline stuff. It can be tracked. They are tracking this stuff. But I'm going to tell you the real narrative. So U.S. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren calls for shutdown of crypto funding of fentanyl. So that's the key word, funding of fentanyl. But what everybody's saying is she's shutting down crypto. She wants to shut down the crypto funding, and she's using that as her platform. Okay, well, let's just listen to what she says. But she's using that as her platform to say, to get the public all freaked out because if you're investing in crypto, you're funding the fentanyl trade, right? But listen to her words and how she says stuff, okay? She is literally coercing this lady to agree with her. I yield. Thank you, Senator Vance. Senator Warren of Massachusetts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Fentanyl is fueling the most severe drug crisis our country has ever seen. In 2022, synthetic opioids like fentanyl were responsible for 75,000 deaths, more than two-thirds of all drug overdose deaths last year. Fentanyl is now the leading cause of death among Americans 18 to 45. China is the leading supplier of the chemical ingredients called precursors that drug cartels use to produce fentanyl and other synthetic opioids. China also plays a major role in laundering money for the cartels. Okay, so now she's tied you emotionally. Fentanyl, the war with China, and money laundering. So now you're sitting here listening to this and the public is like, oh, and it's all over the news now. So you're thinking about crypto. And so you're, you're a subject around July 4th, you know, when you're at July 4th parties and all this stuff, you're gonna be like, oh, did you hear that crypto is used for fentanyl? So, so why would you get into it? It's, it's the next push down, the next leg down for crypto. And it's going to create nice, nice buying prices on the back end of this year. Guys, Pete, this, although I'm just so frustrated about this because She's using a very sensitive subject to make it about something that they fucked up. They fucked this up, guys. Sorry. Excuse my language, but they fucked this up. Their bad policies, their greed fucked this up. Assistant Secretary Rosenberg, you are responsible for leading and coordinating anti-money laundering policy. Now, Treasury has caught a number of Chinese companies that were providing fentanyl precursors. Were any of these Chinese companies using cryptocurrency in their illegal drug transactions? Thank you, Senator, for the question. Unfortunately, uh, that is a mode that some of these uh, uh, precursor manufacturers and illicit drug uh, organizations have used, the receipt of Bitcoin payments in uh, wallets, cryptocurrency wallets. Okay, so we're talking about these Chinese companies. Okay, so key, she's coercing her. She's like... Is was crypto? Yeah, crypto was used. Cash was used. Probably people's credit cards, debit cards. We have no idea how much cash was used. I'm sure it was a lot more than cryptocurrency. Now, I'm not defending the fentanyl. That's not what I'm defending. I'm defending the fact that she is going to use this for her own policies, political and financial gain. That are supplying the precursors to fentanyl and they're getting paid in cryptocurrency. And you have to ask why this would happen because crypto 
is supposedly banned in China. But new research from the blockchain analytics firm Elliptic shows that more than 90 companies based in China are raking in tens of millions of dollars worth of crypto selling these fentanyl precursors. The number of crypto transactions associated with Chinese fentanyl brokers increased by 450% just last year alone. So Assistant Secretary Rosenberg, why are drug suppliers and cartels increasingly turning to crypto for large scale drug sales and money laundering? Thank you, Senator, for the question. Uh, th the reason why they would find this appealing is the same reason that other financial criminals would find it appealing, which is to say there's an element of pseudonymity they seek in using this kind of payment mechanism. Also, you're able to, unfortunately, process, unfortunately for these purposes, process a, lar a large number, a, a large value, financial value across Lots the border. Lots of dollars worth of Yes, of sure. Bitcoin in this instance, right? That okay, key right there. She said lots of dollars, right? So this is what I'm going to show you, okay? She's going to bring up one of her bills that she brought up. Fam, this is all about bringing crypto legitimized underneath the financial system. And the bill that she's coming out with is just like, so I worked at the bank. But when you go into the bank, if you have transactions over $10,000, right? I think you guys all know that it's, uh, they, it's, it's tracked, right? Same thing. That's, that's what her bill is all about. It's making sure that family, your, your banks are going to custody your cryptocurrency. Jamie Dimon has his own blockchain technology. Their wealthy clients can invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum. The middle class, the, the lower class can't invest in it, but the wealthy clients can. Okay. The, uh, a large amount of a high value of uh, such currency across a national border. And if you can achieve a person to person transaction or um, a decentralized transaction, then you're avoiding the kind of scrutiny, you know, your customer financial disclosure that you would get if you used a more traditional financial institution. So those anonymity enhancing features are generally what financial criminals that you're noting here find attractive. Okay. So they're using crypto. This is their payment of choice for these fentanyl dealers. This is looking good for them. You see that? She goes, so this is their payment of choice. This is looking good for them. They don't know you, how much cash is being used. Like this is their payment of choice. This is looking good for them. She didn't let her answer. She just moves on. And it, it is one, one. unfortunately. Okay. okay. She did. Oh, there we go. She did let her answer. It's one. There are others, but it is certainly but one. But this is, this is. She goes, there's one, but there's certainly others. So she's like, what are you talking about? Like, she's probably like, Did cash is probably the number one used. One that they're focused on here. So Elliptic's research found that these 90 Chinese suppliers sold enough. Let's talk about the volume. This group sold enough precursor drugs in exchange for crypto to produce $54 billion dollars worth of fentanyl pills. That is enough fentanyl to kill nearly 9 billion people, all paid for by crypto. When one of the companies was asked whether their Mexico-based customers paid in crypto, they replied that the cartels, and I'm going to quote, always use Tether or Bitcoin to pay. It is no problem. Now, the Office of National... One, so she's doing keywords, crypto, crypto, Tether, Bitcoin, crypto, crypto, Tether, Bitcoin. National Drug Control Policy has identified crypto as, quote, central to the rise of drug sales in the United States. Senator Marshall and I believe that Congress has talked about fentanyl long enough. We propose to do something to fight back, and that is why we are reintroducing our Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act which closes loopholes in our anti-money laundering rules. So it goes back to her political agenda, okay? So she talks about, okay, so what, how, what? let's think about this for just a moment. Let's rationalize this. So if they shut down crypto for fentanyl trade, which I think they should shut down fentanyl trade, that's not the point of this, is what are people going to use? Cash. They're using it right now. It, it, th th this is not about fentanyl. This is about them losing control of the monetary system. Janet Yellen picked up the phone right away and called Jamie Dimon... Jamie Dimon, who's connected to BlackRock, right? JP Morgan, 
BlackRock is one of the biggest shareholders. It's all connected, guys. Coinbase is connected to BlackRock through Aladdin. You got Circle. It's all connected, guys. Circle, BlackRock, Jamie Dimon. Janet Yellen picks up the phone and calls Jamie Dimon right away. They take they monopolize First Republic. You know, Jamie Dimon has a sophisticated cryptocurrency system being built right now. AI trading, guys. This is all about trying to maintain control under the centralized banking system. Okay, so this is her bill. The bill, uh, bill directs specific federal. This is a key part I wanted to uh, read for you guys. It, uh, in addition, FinCEN must require U.S. persons to report cryptocurrency transactions through the foreign accounts over $10,000. There you go. Just like the normal banking system that they have right now. Okay, so this is what's really happening. This is what they're freaked out about, guys. This is from the uh, European Central Bank. This is the key linkage between banks and non-bank financial sectors. Okay. I'll verbalize this. So example of non-bank financial institutions include insurance firms, venture capitalists, currency exchanges, some micro loan organizations. I'll talk about a personal experience with that. Pawn shops. These are non-bank financial institutions that provide services that are not necessarily suited to banks, serve as competition to banks and specialized sector groups. Key is competition to banks. That's what this is all about. It's about the competition to banks. For example, I'm launching a new company on July 1st. Went to the normal traditional bank. They're not lending anymore, guys. We run a, a good amount of money through the banks. We're good lenders. We're good creditors. We have great credit scores. So I went to non-bank financial institutions to get lending at a decent interest rate. I got a really good interest rate. That's what's happening. People like me who are good creditors, uh, we you know we run you know we actually just use the banks as transitory. We move we move our money and get it into assets, but we use our banks and we need the banking system to be able to operate our businesses, right? That's one of the biggest things. So like, for example, I went off to a non-bank financial institution. So they lost my business. So now a non-bank financial institution gave me lending to start my startup company. And so now, now the bank lost my business. My apologies. Somebody called me during that point. So, um, so yeah, that's what I want to share with you guys. This is not about uh, 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 her, her, her wanting to stop. Fentanyl. She just, it's not about that, guys. It's about the fact that they're losing control of the monetary system. Okay. So what does this mean for you as a what is going on here? Okay. I don't know what's going on with my computer. So hopefully you guys can still see me. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Everything's going wacky right now. Warriors, ah, let's get your shit together. Let's go.